My name is Jose Antonio Garcia, and my title is Production Sound Mixer. I was born in Mexico City, you know, the 1957. It was a gorgeous city then. It's a, a very special place, I think. I was very blessed to have been born in that city. I grew up very close to where the central market of Mexico City, and it was a really, really interesting place. I mean, you would see people like crossing themselves and hiding all the valuables. And a lot of money was moved there because, you know, all the produce for the city arrived there. It was a fantastic childhood, actually, because we were like in, you know, pedaling the bicycles through downtown Mexico City and, you know. My passion has always been music. I took a sabbatical year and I stayed in Europe for a year. At the time it was like real to real um, playback for parties. So I would bring the music and the lights for the parties and that's how I financed my trip to Europe. So I mean, there, there has always been a, an inclination oriented by my ears. I had a friend that was studying at the London Film Institute and I visited uh, he said, that's the first time I saw somebody with an Agra, which is a reel-to-reel -reel machine that we always used to use. You know, I said, hmm, interesting. I like that. <laughs> but, you know, a couple of years passed because at the time I was too busy, you know, living my hippie days. I ended up going to a little town in Mexico in the state of Veracruz. And then later on I returned to Mexico City and uh, I went to visit my friend, that same friend, and they were shooting a documentary and uh, they needed help. And I jumped in, you know, holding the stick and the boom. And that was the first time that I did anything in the movie industry. You know, I've been very fortunate in my life because um, at that time, my father had a very good sense of uh, real estate and he did very good you know, buying lots and stuff like that. So his work um, connections uh, allowed him to give this godfather of mine uh, a big contract. And in order to pay back my father's favor, he offered me two years anywhere I wanted to go to study. And I ended up going to Indiana University. Uh, there they had an um, associate of science in the School of Music called, called Audio Technology. And it was mostly basically geared to, towards music recording. We had an incredible amount of, you know, source to record. And as I said, you know, it was mostly focused to, towards music. But, you know, in my mind I was already the, the direction of, you know, getting involved in the movie industry. I came here to LA with, uh, well, you know, trying to get anything. That was in 1982. I ended up doing some looping for a Spanish company that dubbed all the movies into Spanish. Also ended up working as a technician for Nagra because I couldn't really find, you know, a lot of work. So that's how I ended up balancing myself here for like um, that year. And then I went back to Mexico City. By then I had a Nagra and I started doing television and, you know, some little stuff. I never boomed too much. Uh, I mean, I did, but, you know, I was never, like, tall enough to begin with. And then, you know, it was always the sound for me. Our basic mission is to capture the performances. To me, it's, uh, well, the soul of the image. Beauty can fool you very easily, you know, but the voice is always very hard to, to fool somebody with it. So, and, you know, I try to, you know, capture that as the best of my abilities. It implies, you know, using microphones. It implies hiding microphones, body micing the talent, and, you know, doing anything that I can do to preserve that performance. When I started this business, I thought that if I could fill my hand with, with movies that I was really, really proud of, I would 
feel myself served and, you know, happy. And luckily I've been more than one hand now with my, the, the projects that I really love. Not only as, as the making, because some of them are really difficult, but the product itself is just so beautiful to see, you know, when, you know, all the, all the um, crafts gel into this jewel, really beautiful sense of accomplishment. So, you know, I mean, I'm very close to my friends Alfonso Cuaron and Alejandro González Iñarri, too. We grew up in uh, Mexico City together. Alfonso and I know each other since we were both assistants. And, you know, those are people that are really close to my heart. And, and, but then also here I have been very fortunate to have worked with, you know, Terence Malik and um, Alexander Payne, Ben Affleck. And, you know, those are people that I feel close enough to go to them and say, you know, this something is not working. I mean, we have that close of a relation that I have had and, and a little input on, you know, the performance. And at times when the, I'm not sure, you know, like I just close my eyes and only guide myself with the uh, with the hearing. We met in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. <laughs> we were shooting a movie called To the Wonder. And then after the movie, Terry wanted a lot of voiceovers, so I ended up going to Ben's house uh, for a bunch of times to record uh, the latest uh, Terry's writing. After that, he called me for Argo, yes. Oh, that was a fantastic movie. I mean, as a, as a group and as the ensemble was fantastic. The story was unique and the way that, you know, Ben handled the whole process was really, really elegant. I was very happy to see him just like, like a torero, sole. Very, very elegant. I think it was very sourcy noises, right? I mean, it was like, um, you know, we couldn't shut down a newspaper, so, you know. But then, you know, you, that, that's part of the um, balance that we try to keep. I mean, I try to keep a very transparent ship, even though I'm not that subtle. But, uh, you know, overall in our work, we always try to, to be the least seen. Good sound man is never seen. And it's true because, you know, I mean, there's many people that he would have gone like, oh, no, I cannot shoot this because of that and da, da, da. And, you know, they're constantly trying to get the most pristine sound that they're, and there's nothing pristine left in this world. So there's times that you just need to eat it. And, you know, you'll roll with the punches. Well, sound works exponentially, meaning the distance increases, the sound level decreases by double. So if I'm here and as I move back, it'll be, you know, like half, then a quarter, and it'll vanish basically. So you have the shortest distance to the mic with the body mix. Well, everybody's voice is different. I mean, I don't think you can categorize, you know, Styles. There's pleasant voices, there's pleasant voices that aren't, you know, I mean, they're all unique in their own way. It's funny because, you know, uh, every time I start a project, the night before I don't sleep. It's like excited, excited. I mean, and it's been like, what, 40 years I've been doing this? But still, you know, like the, the, the first day is always like, <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it's, I, I still find uh, a lot of pleasure, uh, you know, confabulating with a group. And, you know, whether you want it or not, you end up forming a family. It's a very um, fulfilling artesany that we do. Driving the van through the streets of Istanbul, crouched in the, in the floor of the van, and, you know, just 
looking at these guys being, you know, pelted and screamed at, and it was like very, very intense. The last day there when in, I, I, I guess, Sofia we were there, I think. The, the movie was going to Arlington, and um, I had to go bury my brother, so that's when uh, Ben, you know, say thank you to me, and I, w I, I remember that I was, you know, on the bottom of the, by then we had climbed to the top of uh, Agia Sofia, and, you know, he was saying goodbye, uh, he said goodbye to me, and the Turkish crew just came and applauded me, and I was fucking crying. <laughs> He was crazy. He was beautiful. I mean, it was very, like, heartfelt from him, and, you know, it, to me it was like a, a beautiful moment. Staying awake. <laughs> <laughs> that really depends on the project. Because, you know, there's projects like Sideways, that everything flowed, the group was fantastic, and the, and the end product was also amazing, and, da, da, da. and then there's projects that, you know, they're just not for me, I guess, or, you know, or just, you know, difficult. Well, that it is a marathon, you know, it, it takes a long time for the snowball to gather momentum and gather more volume and, you know, as such patience is the, the, the key word. One thing I'll say for me, I measure my success on the amount of people that I have been able to help become what I do. People that I've seen interest, knowing that they had the years and the disposition. And I think, you know, I've helped a couple of people like that. And that's, uh, to me, the measure of my success is how you know, measured by how many people I've helped, you know, grow into sound mixing.